I'm Andy and welcome to my channel. In today's video, we'll go over two reasons why it really doesn't matter which Combat Zero you pick for your civilian home defense. And I'll also go over the most important concept when zeroing your home defense rifle. If you're trying to determine the best AR-15-0 for your home defense, it's actually a lot easier than you might think. Although with all those videos out there saying this is the best zero and this is the best zero and I've confirmed that this is the best zero, I can see why you might be confused. Typically, there are four different types of zeros that we might pick for home defense. A 25, 300 yard zero, a 36 yard zero, a 50 yard zero, and a 100 yard zero. But before we get into those specific zeros, let's talk about the zero concept in general. The concept of our zero is that as we look through our sights, the barrel is slightly pointed upward so that our bullet is launched at an upward angle and it crosses our line of sight at our near zero. And then the bullet rises until it starts its descent and finally crosses our line of sight again at our far zero without having to adjust our sights or to correct for the distance. This allows us to engage targets at any distance while aiming our sights at the same point on our target. So in our 25 300 yard zero, the first number 25 is the near zero and the 300 is the far zero. Now the same is true for the 50 200 zero. The last, the far zero is approximate for those uh, distances. Our 36 yard zero is actually a 36 yard near zero and approximately a 300 yard far zero. With regard to our 100 yard zero, it's actually a little bit different concept. In that concept, the bullet rises out to 100 yards on our line of sight, but as our bullet kisses that near zero, it then begins to uh, fall back uh, towards the ground and never really gets to a far zero. So when you are picking your zero, if you don't have access to a 36 yard uh, range where you can use that zero, don't worry about it, just pick another zero. And if you have trouble getting an accurate zero at 50 or 100 yards, obviously move into 36 or 25 yards to get an accurate zero. Because the most important factor here I think that we can all agree on is to get an accurate zero. The first reason why our combat zero really isn't applicable to a home defense situation is the fact that the far zero in that zero really doesn't matter. Um, if you look at FBI statistics in shootings, three to seven yards is the most common distance for a shooting. Now in a home defense situation, uh, that may be extended a little bit. I can't even see 25 yards in a line of sight at my house. Uh, maybe you can see 25 yards, but as our distance increases, it becomes less and less a self-defense situation and more of an offensive situation. And that's really what the Combat Zero was designed for. It was designed for both self-defense and for combat offensive capabilities, a capability to shoot at 25 yards and out to 300 yards. That's not gonna happen in our uh, context in our uh, today's world. Now, you could be the what if guy and what if I live on a ranch and I wanna shoot 300 yards away at somebody that's come onto my property, well, we can say what if and what if and what if until we're blue in the face, but the reality is that you're not gonna take a shot at that distance. Now, you can take a shot at that distance, but as I said, the further out the distance is, the more explaining we have to do to our local county prosecutor as to why that wasn't an offensive shoot and a murder and really not self-defense. What you are looking at on screen are four ballistic charts that I picked for the four zeros that we talked about in the previous part of the video. I ran these ballistic charts with M855 62 grain ammunition at approximately 3,000 feet per second and at standard atmospheric conditions. I ran a chart for the 25 yard zero, the 36 yard zero, the 50 yard zero, and the 100 yard zero 
at a distance of 7 yards. As you can see in our 25 yard zero, our bullet is actually impacting 2 inches below our point of aim. At 7 yards, our 36 yard zero impacts 2.2 inches low of our point of aim. At 7 yards, our 50 yard zero impacts 2.3 inches low of our point of aim. At 7 yards, our 100 yard zero impacts 2.4 inches low of our point of aim. To put this in perspective, let's take a look at this chart. With our point of aim being 7 yards, all of our impacts will be low at 7 yards, at least 2 inches. The vertical dispersion of all of our impacts at this distance will also fit within the size of a dime easily. It doesn't matter if we pick a 25, 36, 50, or 100 yard zero, there is no appreciable difference in our accuracy. Now let's look at our same combat zeros we've been talking about, except let's extend the range to 25 yards. As you can see, our 25 yard zero hits at 25 yards. Point of aim, point of impact. Our 36 yard zero still hits low, but by only 0.8 inches. Our 50 yard zero still hits low at 1.2 inches. And our 100 yard zero hits low at 1.7 inches. Let's again put this into perspective. As you can see, the top of our soda can, the inner circle measures exactly 1.7 inches. So all of our shots at the 25 yard mark will hit within this soda can top. Well, if you've stuck around for this part of the video, you probably understand where this is going. Our AR-15 has a tall offset between the height of our sights and our barrel, which it's approximately 2.7 inches. So all of our shots out to 25 yards are going to impact low from the point of our aim, except obviously for that 25 yard zero. So the most important part of picking a zero is just pick a zero that you are comfortable with, one that you can get an accurate zero with and get training and train for that offset. Your offset will matter more than the actual zero distance you pick for your AR-15. For more videos on the AR-15, including long range shooting, please check out my channel. God bless and guide America. Have a good one and thanks for watching.